Hi everyone. In this video, I'm going to interview Dr. Martha Parham, Senior Vice President of Public Relations at the American Association of Community Colleges. Dr. Parham is here to offer some advice as to how you can effectively transfer colleges. Dr. Parham, thanks so much for joining. Thanks for having me. It's so exciting to be here. So at what point are students eligible to transfer to a different school? Can students transfer after one semester or do they have to wait a few years? Well, it's a great question. There's really no one rule for transfer. Each community college and each university has their own rules for transfer. Typically, students can consider transferring after they've completed 12 units. But again, that can vary depending on individual circumstances and colleges. Some universities will accept students with fewer credits, but they may be admitted as a freshman. So for the most part, if you have 12 units that are transferable, you can be eligible for transfer. So if a student wants to transfer, what does that entail? Can you kind of give us a step-by-step -step guide of the transfer process? I can do my best. As I said before, there's no one rule for transfer and it looks different. So my best piece of advice would be to do your homework before you start your classes. <laughs> Make sure if you're a community college student and you know you wanna transfer, you wanna start with the end in mind and make sure that you're taking classes that transfer to the university program that you're interested in. So the first step is research and doing your homework. Find out what will qualify you as a transfer student at the university that you wanna to go to. Remembering that universities are different. So if you have two in mind, they may have different requirements for the same application period. Talk to an academic advisor or a counselor at your community college before you start taking classes. You don't wanna take a bunch of classes or take a whole semester's worth of classes and find out that they're not gonna to transfer to the program that you're interested in. So talk to them before you start taking classes and make sure that all of those classes will transfer accordingly. Again, remembering it may be different for different universities. So once you've developed your pathway and take and pass all of those classes <laughs> that will transfer, you're gonna need to apply to the university. Now, many community colleges have these structured kind of transfer pathways where if you complete a certain set of classes, you're automatically admitted to a university. So it may lead to an automatic admission, but you're still gonna to have to complete some paperwork. So understand what that paperwork is, what the deadlines are, and just know this, it seems complicated, in some cases, it is kind of complicated, but don't let it overwhelm you. Admissions counselors at both community colleges and universities are more than happy to help you. That's their job. That's what they do all day, every day. So use those resources to your advantage. Great. So you mentioned deadlines. What are the important deadlines that students should be aware of? Well, application deadlines for sure. They will probably again be different for different programs, different universities. Transfer applications may have a different set of dates than the regular like freshman applications, if you will. So just make sure you understand when those dates are. Make a note of those deadlines and really make sure you understand all of the things that are required to accompany your application. You may need transcripts, you may need high school graduation records, and those things can take time, sometimes weeks to process. So you don't want to wait until the last minute to apply and find out you don't have all of those supplemental kind of backup things that you need. So make sure you understand those deadlines as well. The good news is those dates are usually posted online, so they're easy to find. And application processes are mostly online now. So you do have a little bit of extra time, but just make sure you're aware of all of the dates for all of the steps and requirements. So missing one of those deadlines would definitely be a problem, but what are some of the other common barriers that students run into while attempting to transfer from one school to another? And can you kind of provide some advice as how to mitigate those barriers? Sure, I think time, you know, we just talked about that, understanding the deadlines, understanding how to order transcripts, how long that takes, 
certainly credits is another. I mentioned it earlier, but you know, so many students end up taking classes without understanding which classes will actually transfer. And then they find out that they've taken a semester's worth of classes that aren't gonna transfer. So that can be a problem. Do your homework again. The other issue can be money. It costs money to apply to colleges. So make sure you, in addition to the dates and important information that you need to gather, understand how much it costs to apply for admission to colleges, to universities. In some cases, you may be able to ask for a waiver of that if that's a barrier, but really understanding how much it will cost in money and time to really complete the entire application process. And again, talk to your counselor, ask for help, understand what you're getting into. The barriers can be broken through, but you have to ask for help. So who should they be reaching out to for help? You mentioned a few other people, but who should they be reaching out to help? Anybody? Absolutely. This is a yes, yes, yes. There's usually a transfer center at community colleges. If there's not an official transfer center, it would be in the admissions office. In some cases, there are academic advisors or counselors. They are all very well schooled in transfer and how it works for the different systems and universities. In some states, they have, again, those predetermined pathways. So you can literally walk into a transfer center and get a list of the classes that you need to take and pass to get into XYZ University and you're all set. But talk to them, they can help you. They can help you understand financial aid. They can help you understand the transfer process itself. And that's really who you need to go to. So your counselor, your academic advisor, someone in the admissions office, they'll be able to help you. Great. So how can students maximize the amount of financial aid that they receive from the institution that they transfer to? Is the process different than it would be when applying to college for the first time right out of high school? No. If we're talking about federal student loans and Pell Grants and grant programs like that, they all have their own unique requirements and things like that. So again, your counselor can help you with that. I would say if at all you can afford to be in community college without utilizing Pell Grants and a lot of loans and you can save those for the more expensive university cost, it will be to your benefit so you just have less debt coming out of college. I think that's probably the smartest way to go, but it really depends on your individual circumstance. So really, again, go back to your counseling. They usually have information about grants that are not just federal grants, but maybe state grants or institutional grants that you can get. And grants you don't have to pay back. So that's the most ideal of financial aid. So did we miss anything? Is there anything else that you believe that students who want to transfer should be aware of? I don't know that you missed anything, but I think what's important to remember is a lot of times students that transfer from community college are either eligible, have fulfilled all of the requirements, or maybe need one or two more classes to be eligible for their associate degree. And so my advice would be to make sure you go ahead and get your associate degree. In some cases, it's just a matter of filling out an application to do so. Because regardless of what happens in your journey, the next part of your journey, if you don't get that associate's degree, you know, you, those credits just sit there. But if you end up not going to a university or taking a different pathway, you always have that associate degree and no one can take it away from you. So that would be my advice is before you transfer, see if you qualify to get your associate degree and go ahead and get it. Because again, it's something that no one can take away from you once you've earned it. Great. Well, thanks again, Dr. Farham, for joining us today. Thank you, Jackson. It's great to see you. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And for more interviews like this, please subscribe. Have a great day, everyone.